Hey guys, and welcome back to Tutor by Design. In today's video, we're going to be covering six more of the hardest SAT math question types that you might have seen on the December SAT. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So we're going to start with one that if you have been practicing a lot of SAT question types, especially even from the question bank, you probably wouldn't have struggled too much with this question. The thing is, we're given where we want to find which the following is a factor of this expression. And we're given that R is a non zero constant. Usually when we're given a question like this, we don't also have a constant in here. So this might have thrown you off. Well, especially if you're solving this by hand, this is a great time to teach you that if we have a function, so I'm going to put this function into Desmos. So minus six plus five R times x plus 15r when that function is equal to zero so no matter what my r is when my function is equal to zero my factors will also be equal to zero basically they'll have the same x intercept so if i type in my factors so the first one would be 2x minus 5r we're going to see that they have the same exact y intercept and if i just move r around just to make sure it looks like no matter what they're going to have that same y intercept right if i keep moving it around it'll still be the same so it looks like this one's going to work now if i try x minus 3r it looks like that is not going to have the same y intercept it might eventually right if i keep moving this maybe one time it will it actually looks like it never does even if it did it if it isn't always going to have the same x-intercept then it's not a factor and so this one's wrong and so it's only going to be one only now this next question is an extremely rare question that used to be asked a lot more but it seems like they're bringing it back and this is going to be the remainder theorem so just very very quickly the remainder theorem says that if i have some polynomial let's call it p of x and i divide it by x minus a whatever my remainder is that's going to equal p of a okay so that is what i'm going to do here basically if i'm dividing the function by x plus 10 the x plus 10 is the x minus a right so if x plus 10 equals x minus a then these can just cancel out and i'll get 10 equals negative a and so negative 10 is going to equal a okay so we're going to have p of negative 10 right and then that's equal to the remainder right and the remainder here is three so we literally just have that p of negative 10 is three so that means that the point of negative 10 comma three right because this is my x value this is my y value that is going to be a point on the polynomial right so my answer there is going to be it passes through this point right Okay, now this question is a pretty tricky one. We're given in the given system of equations, k is a positive constant, and we wanna find which of the following could be the point where the graphs intersect. So what I'm gonna do here is I could try to solve this in Desmos. I could basically just put this in, and it looks like it doesn't really matter what my k is, and I'm gonna have to just maybe move it around, or it'll just give me the same answer no matter what k is. We're gonna have to figure that out in this question. And so we see here, okay, well, when do these two points meet? We're gonna have to zoom in a lot, and it looks like they meet at this very, very very random point right this isn't even an answer choice right and so if i move k around let's see what happens it looks like it keeps moving along this line right it looks like it keeps moving along this line now let's notice something i'm actually going to pull this point out if we move it across this line it looks like it's going to completely change right it looks like it's going to completely change and so what i was going to try to do is figure out will my x value ever be the same exact thing maybe will the y value stay the same and that doesn't work right so instead at this point it's probably easier to just solve it by hand right because you are going to have so many different points that you could have it seems like i'm just going to keep moving this around until it ends up hitting one of the points i'm given that's going to be a colossal waste of time so instead what i can realize is if these equations are both equal to the same number I can just set them equal to each other, right? I can basically substitute this in 4K. So I can say 40X plus 39Y is going to equal 39X minus 40Y. And so then what I can do is I'll subtract 39X from both sides. So minus 39X. And then I'll also subtract 39Y to get rid of that. And so what's going to happen here is this will end up becoming 40 minus 39 is just one. So one X, this will cancel out. And then this will also cancel out and we'll just get equal to negative 40 Y minus 39 Y is negative 79 Y. And so why is this important? Well, now I know that whatever my X value is, it's going to be equal to negative 79 Y. So actually, let's just write this X over negative 79 is going to equal Y. This is what we're given. OK, and so if I look at my answer choices, which one of them is going to have that part? Well, I can see that in answer choice A, if my X is five, then negative five over 79, right? If I have five over negative 79 equaling Y, well, that is what I'm given for my Y value. So the answer there becomes A. You also could have, if you wanted to, you could have put this in Desmos as just X over negative 79 equals Y. And then you could have just seen when they when the. Uh, 
like points are on the line. So I could have put five comma negative five over 79. And I would have gotten that it is going to be a point on the equation. If you look here, it's going to be a point on the equation, but that is just for, you know, safety. Now in this next question, we are asked about a circular cone. It seems like the SAT loves to ask about cones and pyramids and square pyramids, square prisms a lot now. So this is something you're definitely going to want to know for the March, May and June SATs. In this one, we have that a right circular cone has this volume and the area of the base is that. And we want to find the slant height. So this is actually a pretty common question. We should remember that if I have a cone with a volume, right? The volume is going to equal one third times pi r squared times h. And then we also know that the area of the base, that's what we're given here, that's going to be 49 pi. Well, the base is just going to be equal. That's going to be a square, right? We have that it's a square. And so I have that the base is just equal to pi r squared. So this is going to be valuable information that I'm going to use soon. Now, the last thing I might want to know for this specific question is that if I have my slant height, that's going to be this line here. What I can do is make a right triangle where this is going to be. So let's just call this my radius. And then this is going to be the height. And you can see that this is a right triangle. I can say that the radius squared plus the height squared is equal to the slant height squared. And so at that point, I can really just put this in Desmos, right? I can say that the volume is going to be equal to 392 pi. So I can plug that in. And then I can say that the base is going to be equal to 49 pi. And then I can say that this is just my other equation, right? The way we do this in Desmos is we go in and we put a bracketed list. What I'm going to do is I use the brackets because I'm trying to guess the value of constants where I have more than one equation. So then you put the left side of each equation. So I'll put 392 pi and then you put a comma and then 49 pi. And then you'll have r squared plus h squared. And then on the right side, you're going to put the right side of each equation. So just pi, so one third pi r squared h. And then we're going to have a pi r squared. And then we're just going to have the s squared. And look at that. It gives me my radius, my height, and my slant height. And so the slant height there becomes 25. Now, if I did want to solve this by hand, what I could say is that if 49 pi is equal to pi r squared, right, that's using this equation, I would cross these out and just say that 49 equals r squared. And so seven is my radius, right? And if seven is my radius, I can then plug it into this equation and say 392 pi is equal to one third pi times seven squared for my radius times the height. And then I could solve that equation out. I could cancel these out, multiply the three to the other side and divide both sides by seven squared. And I'll get that the height is going to be 24. And then I could plug that into here. But we get that the slant height is going to be 25. Now here we're given another completing the square question. So they were completing the square question types on both the international and US SAT, which means this is definitely something that you guys are going to be tested on throughout the next testing cycle. Here we're given the given equation where Q is a positive constant defines a circle in the XY plane. And we're told the radius of the circle is nine and we want to find the value of Q. So what I'm thinking here is if I did want to do this in Desmos, I would have to go in here and write X squared plus QX plus Y squared plus QY is equal to or then plus 17 even is equal to zero. And then what I'm going to have to do is change Q around. I can't even see the circle. It looks like I don't even know where the circle is at. Right. And so I can't even figure out what's going on here. Right. Like there's absolutely no help. Right. Okay. It looks like if I make it negative, it's going to work. Right. But then what I'm going to have to do is figure out, okay, I need the radius to be nine. I'm going to have to keep moving this around. You know, maybe we'll have to open our bound for Q and then move it even more. And it's going to be a whole mess. Instead, what you should know, and especially because there was another completing the square question type on this SAT, is you need to complete the square here. What we need to do is take this number, or basically, usually there's a number touching the X here, it's just a Q. You take that and you're going to divide it by two, and then you're going to square it. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing for whatever is touching the Y, and so that's also just a Q. So Q over two, and then you square it. You add this then to the other side of the equation. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to add. We would add Q over two squared and then plus Q over two squared. Then also we're going to move any singular digits that aren't in X or Y to the other side. So we're going to move this over. And then what we're going to do is rewrite our equation in this way. We're going to have our X and then we're going to put whatever this was before we squared it in here. So plus Q over two squared, and then we're going to have plus Y. And then here we also add a plus Q over two squared is equal to, we're going to have to move the 17 over. So negative 17 plus, and then we're going to have Q over two squared 
and then the plus q over 2 squared. That is completing the square. And so what I know then is if my radius is 9, well, this is now in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And so if the radius is 9, then the r squared is 81. And so these two are equal to each other. And so at this point, I can do this in Desmos. I can say 81 is equivalent to negative 17 plus q over 2. So plus q over 2 squared. And honestly, I could have done this using an x as well, plus q over 2 squared. And let's see here, I get that q is going to be 14. And so the answer for the value of q is 14. And if I wanted to, I could have checked that in Desmos as well, but we don't have to here. Now for this last question, we're given if x squared equals this, where n is a positive integer constant, we need to find the value of x to the 3n. All I need to do here is write this in using regression. I'm going to write x1 to the power of n is equivalent, or actually it should be x1 squared, is equivalent to the nth root. You write nth root, and then you're going to have n, and then 5x1 to the power of n plus 150. Okay, and then what I need to do is I just need to make n any positive integer constant. So let's just make it equal to 3. And then all I need to do is x1 to the power of 3n, and it's going to tell me that it's 3375. What we'll notice here is that no matter what I do, it's going to give me the same exact value. You also might be asking, why do I not make a list for x1 like I usually do? Well, that's because we're trying to find the value of x to the 3n. So x can't be several different things at once, because if I had, for example, x being 2, and let's say n was 1, then if I had 2 to the power of 3, that's going to be different than if I said n was 1 and x was 3. Then we're going to have 3 to the power of 3. We can't have all of them, right? And so so here, we actually don't need to put a list for x. We just get our value of x1 to the power of 3 and it being 3375. By the way, guys, before I end the video, I want to remind you that every single one of the questions in this video, as well as over a hundred page of past SAT question types can be found on my free resources page, which I will have linked in the description of this video. You can find so many past questions as well as, of course, I have some English questions for you guys, as well as full practice modules. So you can actually see what the real difficulty of the test will be, because especially if you took the December SAT, you've probably realized by now the difficulty of the test does not match the difficulty of practice exams. Also, you guys can find free English and math cheat sheets where you'll be able to see what you need to know before you even start studying for the SAT. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed.